Hello and welcome to another video on this channel about probability distributions. If you're new here, I'm Eagle, I'm a data scientist living in London and on this channel I do data science, statistics and machine learning videos. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you click the subscribe button. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So in this video, we're going to cover the beta distribution which is quite important and it's actually used quite a lot, even though a lot of people probably haven't heard too much about it. Now, the beta di distribution is a continuous distribution that is often dubbed as a probability distribution of probabilities. Bit of a mouthful. The reason it is called the probability distribution of probabilities is because its domain or the values you can take on are only between zero and one. And it's often used to infer the probability of an event when we have some information about the number of successes and failures of that event. That may seem arbitrary for now, but we'll go over an example to make that theory a bit more concrete in the next slides. Now, if you remember my video I did on Bayes' theorem, you've been checked out, we used a beta distribution as one of the conjugate priors um, when we carry out Bayesian updating, particularly is the prior when we have a target variable or a target outcome which is a binomial or Bernoulli distribution. And that's the main use behind it. And in fact, it's actually quite an important use because Bayesian statistics is used a lot within data science. And so it's really important that we have this beta distribution prior because it's really, really useful. So if you want to learn more about the application, make sure you check out that video. I'll link it somewhere on the screen here. And I'll tell you all about using a beta distribution as a prior when doing Bayesian updating. Now, the mathematical details behind the beta distribution is this. So its PDF looks a, kind of like in this format here, where the denominator is something known as the um, beta function. And the beta function is composed of several gamma functions. So we've got a function inside a function, a bit confusing. Um, but you don't need to worry too much about it. All you need to like, kind of know is that alpha is basically the number of successes we have in an outcome, and beta is the number of failures we have in an outcome. Again, we'll apply this in theory, all this theory in a second to make it more concrete. If you want to know about how we derive this PDF from first principles, I have linked this talk in the description below, and in there you'll find a link here that will take you to um, uh, a web page that will you know do this whole derivation for you like how do you arrive from this pdf from first principles if you're interested in that for most cases as data scientists we don't really need to derive these pdfs from first principles because it might be fun to do but it's not necessarily that useful when we're applying in situations the main part is kind of understanding and or getting intuition behind these distributions and where they're used Right, let's now kind of build this picture up of what the beta distribution really is. So the, the denominator of the beta distribution, you may notice, is in fact very similar to the binomial. Um, where, you know, for the binomial, what we have is the probability of achieving X successes from N events with a given probability P. That is what the binomial distribution is trying to do. So for example, the probability of flipping six heads from 10 coin flips is roughly 20%. Assuming we have a probability of a head being 50% or 50% chance landing on heads. Now, like I said, they look very similar here. As in, you can see the layout is kind of analogous, but there's kind of one key feature. So for the beta distribution, the probability is the random variable we're trying to estimate. But for the binomial distribution, the probability is fixed. And what we're trying to do is infer the probability of a given number of successes, knowing the probability that they occur at. So there's a slight kind of distinction there, but it's good to be kind of be clear on that. So beta is, is trying to say, what is the probability of a success given we've had this many successes and failures? Whereas binomial is saying, we know what the probability of a success is, so what would be the probability of achieving this many number of successes in some given number of trials? So it's kind of like an inverse of it, and that's why you see they're used as conjugate priors so often, because they're kind of like the inverse of each other, and that's the reason 
it's so useful to have these two things in Bayesian updating problems. So we can use the beta distribution to estimate the probability of an event if we know the number of successes that it's had, in this case alpha or alpha minus one uh, because of correction and the number of failures will be beta or beta minus one due to that correction. So here's a, like a really simple example we can, go, we can use like going back to our coins analogy. Let's assume I have a biased coin and I flip this coin 50 times and it lands on heads 30 times, which is our success, and lands on tails 20 times, which is our failure. Now we can plot this in Python on the right here. All we do is call this beta dist function from the SciPy stats model. This is just calling the beta distribution PDF. And then we have our data here. So we know generally it was alpha minus one. So in this case, we need to add a one to make sure we have yeah, 30 successes. So we have alpha 31 and beta 21 for our corresponding successes and failures. We then generate our domain or our X values. Um, we know the beta distribution is between zero and one. So we just generate a range of values over that period. And then we just simply call this our function, the beta distribution function on those three variables we've attached and we can plot the results. Now, what you notice here in the plot is that the most likely outcome or the most kind of expected value that the probability of a heads is, is 60%, which makes sense. 30 divided by 50, 60%. So that is what we expect the probability of a head being. However, it's a distribution. So we're not dead right there is that. As you see here, it kind of drops at the 40% and 80% mark. So what we're saying is that, yes, it's likely is 60%, but it could be 61%, it could be 59%. We don't know because our data range is quite limited. Uh, but that's what a beta distribution distribution does, is that it's saying what is the most likely probability um, of this event happening given this data we've shown it. And that's what's demonstrated here in this plot. Now, I hope that makes sense. I think it's quite neat, but also quite intuitive to think about um, what it's trying to do in this case. Now, like I said, that data was quite limited. We didn't have a lot. But let's say we flip another coin and we get 100,000 heads and 100,000 tails. Now, we can apply the same rules in Python here where we have 100,000 and 100,000. In this case, if I've omitted, I've like removed that minus one part because we have such a large number, it's kind of irrelevant at that point. And we plot the result. Now, remember, now, in this case, we've had equal number of successes and failures. And so we expect the probability of getting um, a head to be 50%. And what you see here is that the the kind of the mean value is at 50%. But look how narrow this kind of peak is, right? Because we have a lot more data. So we're nearing to the population of, of the coin that we're getting even more confident that the peak is at 50%. You see here, the kind of drop off is, you know, I don't know what this is, but it's probably like 48 and 52%. So it's very, very likely that our coin has a probability of landing on heads is between 48 and 52%. If we even took more data and had like 500,000 samples, then this peak will slowly converge to one value. And that's what's happening here. With more data, we have been more confident about um, what, what the probability of a success is. And this is true for pretty much every case of statistics. The more data we have about the problem, the more sure we can be. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the beta distribution. I also have a corresponding blog for this talk, which will be linked in the description below, that has a bit more detail um, regarding some examples and also a bit more mathematics if you're interested in learning more about the beta distribution, also in a readable format. If you want to know more about statistics and data science, you can reach me at these channels. Obviously, this YouTube channel has got a lot of time series, machine learning concepts that you can feel free to browse. I also have a quite a few material in my GitHub and X. And the final thing is I also run a weekly newsletter, um, which is all about me discussing my thoughts and latest findings. 
as a data scientist and some tips and tricks that may help you in your data science career. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.